In this video, you're gonna come along with me for a day in the life as a hybrid athlete training for a sub one hour, 20 minute half marathon attempt. I'm gonna take you with me as I go through the training day and explain why I'm doing everything I'm doing, from my pre-run nutrition to the workout itself, and then my post-workout nutrition afterwards. You're gonna get behind the scenes access, and I'm gonna explain exactly how you can implement all of this into your own life. Can't get cute with it, rent is due. You know the drill, always dunk. Don't at me about scrambling eggs in the pan. It makes life easier. Pre-workout meal here before this track workout and then the lift. Gonna go higher on carbs because it's a pretty intense track workout. And then lift, two eggs, half a cup of egg whites, half a cup of oats, cup of milk, banana, pecans, and raw honey. That total is 43 grams of protein, 81 grams of carbs, and 43 grams of fats. That's 870 calories. Pretty high intensity workout. So the calories are high before the training session. Let's go crush this. Just getting to the track. Plan for this workout, 10 miles of total work. It's a two mile easy warm up, followed by four miles at a 6.15 pace. I'll probably try to start at 6.15 and like negative split down from there if I feel good to work that average closer down to the uh, like 6.05-ish range if I can do that, if it, if it feels good. Uh, 800 meter jog and then four by 400 at right around a 5.20, 5.30 pace with 200 meter jog between each of those and then a two mile cool down. We're gonna get into this. It's a long track workout. It's gonna be a tough one. Let's go. I'm gonna hit a quick dynamic warm up here just to get a little loose before starting to run. go. Just got done with the four mile push. Went 609, 606, 607. 607, really consistent. Heart rate got up there, it was pretty hard. Wet track, kind of feel like you're slipping a little bit as you're going, so the speed I find a little difficult when you don't have that traction, but felt good, really good push. Now I gotta get into these 400s and make sure I'm pushing hard on these. Four hundreds complete. I did them at a 506, 517, 506, and five minute pace. Really happy with those. Felt strong. Was able to keep pushing despite the four mile push before it. Really good session. Gonna do this two mile cool down. So normally I'd head straight to the gym right now to go hit my lift. But I don't know if you can see this. I am drenched, top and bottom. So I'm gonna head home, change, get my pre-workout drink, and then head over to the gym. Come along. 10 miles in the book. Oh shoot, that's backwards. How do I do this? You guys gotta trust me. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's better like this. 10 miles in the books. Hair looking extra crazy after that session. Woo! I'm freaking soaked. Let's go get a change of clothes without waking up a little man from his nap which is a big no-no. All right, I'm gonna go change. 
don't come with me because this video will get way too weird. Boom. These mics crack me up because the little windshield makes it look like a salt and pepper guy with a sick 90s spiky hairdo. <laughs> okay, so that was a pretty long, hard run and now I have this lift. So I'm gonna eat something before this lift. A lot of people would do like a carb powder or something here, but I really try to get all of my calories or the vast majority of my calories from real food. So I'm just gonna eat a banana um, that'll get me, I don't know, 25 grams of carbs, which really is gonna just give me some energy to get through this lift and, uh, and push through it. And then I'm gonna have my pre-workout drink as well, which I've been experimenting with different things, but trying this Pro Mix right now, and I mix five grams of creatine into that. They use this momentous creatine, it's nice and clean ingredients. Um, the pre-workout is simple, it's just like beta alanine and some caffeine, and then the creatine. Then I'll head over and go nail this lift. banana smashed. Time to get over to the gym and go do the same to this upper pull workout. What's up? Good to see you. A little warm up before we get rolling here. Roll out, hamstrings, IT, what's the side? IT bands, glutes, hip flexors. Get some blood flow after that run before hitting this lift. Plan for the lift is it's an upper pull day, so that's all back and biceps basically. Right now I'm on a split, that's legs, then a push, then a pull day. Um, so today's the pull day. It's gonna be, I think, sumo deadlift clusters to start, which is gonna be more back intensive. Obviously also hit some hamstrings and, and glutes and hips in that, which will be tough after the run. And then it's a whole bunch of back work and some pretty sick bicep work to try to get these arms popping. Main thing when I roll out is just finding those spots that have been giving me trouble or that tend to give me trouble. So for me, my adductors, like on the inside of my hips, uh, hip flexors and hamstrings are usually the things that get banged up the first. Uh, so I always try to target those and spend a few minutes on them. I don't try to warm up for any longer than five minutes just because I don't want to be wasting time. So I try to be as efficient as possible. Four sets of two by two sumo deadlift clusters to start this pull day off. Should be fun. See how the hamstrings feel getting in here. Two reps, wait 15 seconds, and then two more reps. Idea with the clusters is you can hit a higher weight for four. Uh, than you might otherwise be able to. Forces you to like actually hit those full reps, stop at the bottom, reset, hit them properly. I'm gonna build up, this will be a warm up set. We got 315 on the bar, this will probably be the first cluster. You gotta have that dog in here. Tommy's got that dog in him. All right, cluster number one. Let's go get it. Can't get cute with it. Wrench is due. <laughs> 10 second rest. Reset. I tell you what though, it really does feel weird when two dudes that are way more jacked than you are the ones that are trying to film you. All I need is like Tommy on something right now and then I got the full crew making me look like an idiot. All right, set three of four. Let's make these easy, come on. Dig deep. Honestly, shocked that I feel this good after those 10 miles. Really happy that my legs have that kind of juice in them. This is one of those things with hybrid training. 
the reason that I think it makes you a stronger runner because when you get late into a race and your legs are gassed, knowing that you were able to dig into the well to do stuff like this after a hard running session just gives you confidence. It's like you have this evidence pool that you can just go and reach into to know that you can continue to grind, to know that your legs can take that. If you hit a hill at mile 10 in your half marathon, you know that your legs can handle that because that's what this is. It's training that capacity. All right, last set, best set. Come on. All right, we move on to the B's. Superset, croc, rows. That's like a little bit of cheat in the row, heavier weight, with a barbell bicep curl. Gotta get jacked. Damn, the music's fire today. This is a tough session between the run and this lift. It's a good day. One of those training sessions where you realize that whatever you thought your limits were are just self-imagined. Those self-limiting beliefs, you gotta bust through them. It's the key to life. All right, wide grip. Supinated seated row, a little more bicep and back. Really focusing on the back squeeze. Lighter weight. Wall reference, ab wheel rollout, feet back on the wall, takes the cheating out of it. Really focuses the movement. Squeeze the butt hard. <laughs> Great session. I don't think I have any food at home for this post-workout meal, so I'm gonna make a swing by the grocery store pick up some food for a great post-workout meal, go back and make that up, do a little bit of recap on the day and walk through the macros of how I'm thinking about post-training nutrition after what was a pretty intense run and lift. Getting into the grocery store, game plan always for a post-workout meal after a session like that is focused on protein and carbs. So probably gonna do rice, some fruit, and then some meat maybe a little bit of veggies, but mostly just focus on the carbs. Big proponent of the two minute grocery store run and the two minute one pan lunch meal prep. Throw it on high, eight ounces of beef. Gonna go in the pan, break that up. Then you're gonna throw in about a half a package of this cabbage. Once this cooks a little bit, one pan, gonna get veggies, gonna get the meat and then I'm gonna cook that pre-cooked rice for 90 seconds and throw that in here. Have like a little fried rice all in one pan. Probably take realistically five minutes total. Roman, what are you doing on the counter right now? That's not your spot. That's not your spot. You're supposed to be eating lunch. Come have lunch with Dada. in a show. Roman, can you be quiet for 30 seconds so Dada can film this? <laughs> All right, that five minute, one pan post-workout meal. Rice, ground beef, cabbage, and a grapefruit. Macros, 54 grams of protein, 92 grams of carbs, 16 grams of fat total of 740 calories in that meal. And I got Roman to be quiet for 30 seconds while I filmed this. Thank you. Just looking at the stats from the run, feel really good about how that went. 
you know, had the two mile warm up and then that four mile push I ran at 609, 606, 607, 607. I've got the splits up here on the screen. Really good push right around what I'm gonna need to be doing at that half marathon pace to be at that sub 120, which I feel really good about that I can do that in training. And then those 400s that came after that, the fact that I was able to hold that low five minute pace, 506, 506, 501, got lazy on the one at 519, I feel really good about how the workout went overall. Now, for any of you at home that are thinking about doing this workout, you can scale this back to shorter race goals. So if you're training for a 5K or you're training for a 10K, or you're just training for life, you don't need to do this as a 10 mile workout. To scale this back, you could do a one mile warm up and then a one or two mile tempo push. So instead of the four miles I did, do one or two miles and then do two 400s. You can still do the four 400s just because it's not that much distance, but even just one or two 400s would give you that speed stimulus that really was the intent behind the workout. And then just a one mile cool down at the end, that'll shorten the workout just about in half and it'll give you a great stimulus, a great training response for whatever your race goals might be. If you are going after a half marathon, I really recommend this workout. It was super difficult. And make sure that you're listening to the recommendations I made around the pre-workout and the post-workout nutrition because that pre-workout fuel and then that post-workout recovery is essential. The rest of the day today, I'm gonna to be going back into some work, getting all of that done, and then I'm really gonna be focusing on recovery tonight with a nice big dinner and getting into some sauna action tonight. That's a wrap for this hybrid training day in the life as I continue on my quest for the sub one hour, 20 minute half marathon. If you enjoyed this video, it's going to be a part of a series. You'll also love some of my other videos on my routines, day in the life, vlogs, etc., which you can find here on the screen. And as always, until next time, everyone, stay curious.